With the creation of the internet, our era is one of a constant available flow of information and thoughts that are bombarding us for attention all over the world at any given moment. Along with the stresses of our work lives, home lives, and the stresses of our own social lives, sleep has become viewed more of something we tolerate instead of something we see as a necessity. And while now more than ever, each of us is pushing the limits of what we are viewing, hearing, and being a part of on a daily basis, our view of sleep is that of us being useless or not doing anything while sleeping, causing many of us to view sleep as a complete and utter waste of time. However, it is this ignorance that has been taught to us as we have grown up to treat sleep as an illness that needs a cure, which is in turn costing us money and time and causing many of us pain, frailness, intellectual impairments, and even bringing us closer to our deaths. So I think it's about time we took a deeper look into sleep and its effects we are letting it have on each and every one of our lives. It may seem to be a silly question to ask, but why do we sleep? is something that most of us don't genuinely think we have the answer to. So let's set the record straight. There are the more common reasons we need sleep, including our body replenishes the things that we have used up in our day during our sleep, like a battery regenerating from being recharged from an electrical outlet. Sleep plays a major role in regulating our appetites. Sleep also helps in regulating our moods and enhances our creativity. But the lack of sleep causes impaired impulses, physical and mental stress, poor judgment. Less sleep causes immune function to degenerate, statistically being the reason that those of us who have too little sleep have higher rates of infection. But most of us would be shocked to learn the following reasons for sleep. There are areas of your brain that are more active during your sleep state than while you're awake. And what those neurotransmitters, synapses, chemicals, and mechanisms are doing is basically cleaning out all the things our brain has collected throughout your busy day that you either don't need or are even harmful to your body. For most of us, our days are filled with work and social lives that are packed with information that we either need to remember or believe are everlasting memories that we will cherish forever. But it turns out that without proper sleep, our brains are unable to make and store memories. So instead of getting ahead of your work project by cutting out as much sleep as possible to focus on your work, you are actually causing the filing cabinet that's your brain to close and lock you out making it nearly impossible to remember and store any new information. When we are getting sleep, our bodies are cleaning waste from our brains. However, increased lack of sleep has been linked to the production of a toxic chemical or protein plaque in the brain called beta amyloid, which is associated with Alzheimer's disease. During our sleep, our brain is cleaning out and getting rid of this toxic protein. So if you're not getting the proper amount of sleep every night, this protein will build up, multiply, and increase your risk for getting Alzheimer's disease later in life. In multiple studies done at Stanford University, sleep has been shown to alter the hormones that influence the production, recovery, and progression of cancer cells. It has been discovered that cortisol, which is considered the natural killer cells that help the body battle cancer, typically peak at dawn and decline throughout the day, causing neuroscientists to fear that inadequate sleep is profoundly responsible for the cause, progression, and impaired recovery of cancer cells. In a quote by the health organization, they stated that shift work involving disruption of normal sleep routines is currently classified as an IARC-2A carcinogen, which means that improper or the lack of proper sleep is probably considered carcinogenic to humans. The upside here is that it also is shown that the proper amount of sleep is responsible for the possible prevention and recovery of those same cancer cells. Sleep loss releases hunger hormones that get released and tell your brain that it needs carbohydrates, causing us to overconsume carbs and sugars that our body doesn't in fact need and instead stores in the forms of fats, perpetuating us through a state of unwanted weight gain. So what is the correct number of hours we should be getting of sleep per night? Well, perhaps the better question is, how many hours should we be awake? 
After 16 hours of awakeness, our brain and bodies start showing signs of degeneration and your mental capacity begins to become significantly impaired the longer you fight off sleep. Whereas the suggested number of hours of sleep per night is coming in at around eight hours. But the most surefire way that you can be sure you're getting the right amount of sleep for your body is finding a schedule that allows your body to wake up naturally in the morning. Here are a couple of extra tips to make sure you're getting your best night's sleep. Making sure our rooms are pitch black is important. It has been shown that our minds have an acute awareness of even the smallest point of light penetrating the room where, while we are sleeping and will negatively disturb us in our sleeping process. So blackout shades may just be everyone's new best friend. Melatonin, which is a hormone created in our brains naturally to help us sleep, has also been made into an array of consumable products that have been shown to help support a good night's rest for those of us who struggle with getting and staying asleep throughout the night. So here's to you getting a good night's rest.